So in the shop today, I'm going to show you how I take this rough cut lumber that I bought locally. Got some black walnut, big piece of cherry. I'm going to show you how I take that, turn it into this beautiful cutting board, including the engraving. Got an engraving on the back of our company name. I'm going to show you how I do that with cheap, typical tools. Now, these are tools that I, all, I bought all at Lowe's. Um, I do have a planer and a joiner, but they are the cheapest ones I could find. Uh, you might be able to find cheaper now, but I'm going to show you how I use those and some of the tricks and tips and really some of the downfalls of uh, why you can't necessarily get the best product, but you can try. You can get close. You can get really close. Uh, I'm trying to upgrade my planer and my joiner now, but geez, it's expensive. Tools are expensive. I'm doing what I can with what I have. So, all right, let's uh, take these boards over to the chop saw and I'm gonna chop them down to the first length. So it's not the finished length, but the first length that I'm gonna do. Let's go over to the chop saw. Now, because I don't have T-Track in my miter station, what I typically do is take a block of wood that's got a nice clean face on it and I'll use double stick tape and tape that down where I need it. To make sure that that's square, I'm going to use a roofing square. Get that exactly where I need it. I've already made a mark and I'm just going to tack that down with some double sided tape. Check my measurement one more time. I'm going to lock down my miter saw. Just check from the blade to my stop block. 22 inches. Now I would normally cut a nice clean end on the on the end here with the chop saw and start from there, but the last two inches of this board is sacrificial anyway as I send it through the planer. So that's gonna get chopped off later. Butt that up against my stop block, chop these out. Just so happens in this board, that's what I have for waste so far. <clears throat> now this board did have a crack in it, so I put that as the last uh, piece to be cut in case I wasn't able to get the 22. You know, it's, it's fine because a lot of this board's going to be wasted anyway. So let's get some walnut cut down. Now my walnut I'm cutting down at just over 18 inches, like 18 and a half. Uh, and it's going to become really evident why I'm doing that. Um, but the first thing I'm going to say, walnut's well, expensive, so I don't want to waste any more than I have to. And you'll see why I do that pretty soon. Now while I'm right here, I'm going to cut up this other piece of cherry that I have at the 18 inch, not the 22, like it did the first board. A little more waste on that one but I'll probably just plane this one down and make like a cheese board out of it or something yeah all right so what we ended up with is six pieces of cherry 18 inches long hey while this bows is blabbing along why don't you go ahead and subscribe and like this video hit the notification bell I don't know might just help this guy out to using a cheap planer is to make a couple of your boards a little longer on your cutting board so you're basically going to have two inches hanging out on two boards in the middle of your cutting board so you would take like this board and this board and they would be much longer and that takes care of your snipe and you just trim them off later okay so you finish them exactly the same and they're going to stay in this board and so instead of taping boards to the side and doing it that way, I just leave two long boards right in the middle and that takes care of my snipe. So that's why I make uh, a couple of them 22 inches long. Did I need to do this many? No, but I can always cut those down to 18 and a half like I did these. 
So let's head over to the joiner and see if we can clean up at least one edge of these. Now, all I'm trying to get is just one clean edge where I can start ripping these down on the table saw. So I'll rip them down and then I'll get one flat face. It's not ideal, but it works with this, uh, with this joiner because of course the cherry is way too wide to get um, one parallel or two flat sides because it's too wide for this joiner. So I just get one, I pick whatever's the best. Sometimes they have little chip outs and stuff like that. So like this one here has got that little piece. That would take a lot of joining to get that. My table saw is actually probably going to have this piece as waste anyway as it, when I rip it through the table saw. So I'll get this side here looking good and do all the rest of them. Now that we finished at the joiner and have one flat surface, now we can run them through the table saw and get them cut down to width. So let's do that. I've already changed out for my rip cutting blade. Got my safety glasses over here. Uh, this thing throws a lot of chips, so better get my coffee out of here. And I was going to cut all of the boards up. I think I'm only going to cut what I need to make this one cutting board and then kind of see what I have left over. If I'm able to cut these into inch and a half strips, uh, that I might be able to get more out of it. Uh, the board that I have commissioned right now is two inches thick, so I want to do exactly what I need for that one. So let's get these ripped down to two inch strips. Right, now that we get all of our pieces cut uh, to the rough width, we're going to run them back to the joiner and see if we can get a couple of really good flat faces on them. Uh, we really need to do both of them because, well, we got to stain them on edge and glue them together. Normally, I would run this through my table saw or through my planer, but I'm not able to do that because my planer gives me a ton of snipe. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks on the joiner uh, just to make sure you're using it right and, and getting a good consistent cut. Okay, so let's go back over to the joiner. Now the way that the joiner works is you have a 90 degree fence right here. You would run your flat piece up against that and it would make the bottom uh, become 90 degrees with, with the side. Now the problem with the joiner is this bed is actually lower than this bed. So if you try to keep pressure down here, so you're chewing it off a little faster, what you end up with is a board that is thinner here than it is here. So you want to keep all of your pressure on the out feed table of your joiner. That's where you're going to keep your pressure at. I'm going to use my finger or even a push stick to push it through, but I'm not holding pressure down uh, because what that's going to do is cause it to to take more off here and it becomes thinner as we get to the end. So I'm going to try my best to not put any pressure on the infeed side. Now what you see a lot of people using are these paddles to hold pressure here like this and run it through. Unfortunately, sometimes my uh, joiner, I don't know if, if I haven't waxed the bed enough, uh, but that does not allow me to do that. It just basically the pad slips on the wood, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to test this one out really quick and make sure I'm at exactly one inch there. One inch right there. Perfectly square, that square, that square. So that's how I use my joiner. Try not to put any pressure on the downside here. Um, yes, I ran it through the joiner, then I ran it through the table saw without two 90 degree edges, but this still works out 
uh, amazingly well for having a cheap joiner. All right, so what we want to do now is lay all of our pieces out so that we can figure out what kind of pattern we want to have. So I typically like to put an off color one in the middle, let's say a black walnut uh, in the middle, but this one I think I'm going to do black walnut on the outsides, all cherry on the inside. So let's see how that looks. I've left two of these long so that when I run them through my planer, this piece here is going to end up getting the snipe on both ends if I have it. I usually only have really bad snipe coming out of the planer. So that's what that's going to look like. Now let's uh, go ahead and get it glued up. All right, got one here that I'm going to run back to the joiner one more time. It's got a little rough spot on it. All right, that one looks a lot better. We're going to use this one. Make sure it's going to match up in there good. I like the green. Yeah, that'll look good. All right, let's get some glue. So I'm going to use uh, Tight Bond 3 waterproof. I'm going to use a little roller to apply it. And you don't want to be stingy with the glue. Try and line these up best we can. Make sure to leave a long one sticking out. The better I can line these up now, the less I have to trim off of it later. Love some of the grain of this cherry. You don't want to put so much pressure on it, then it causes it to bow. Just want to get some good squeeze out of the glue. See, I don't have any here. Let's get another clamp on the top. There we go. Let that dry overnight. Come back to it in the morning. All right, so we let the glue set up all night long. Now let's get these clamps off, see what we're left with. A little bit of glue to clean up, but relatively flat. I like it. Typically just use a chisel. Get some of this big glue off of here. I got no snipe on this side. Get just a little right here on the end because I put these boards in. 
So I was going to cut that off anyway. I cut this a uh, half inch long. So I'm good to trim those off anyway. So this is what we've ended up with. You can see right here we got a little snipe right on the very end. I could have gone just a little longer on my little tailboards here. So now I need to figure out which side I want to be up. Just looking at grain, smoothness. I think I like this side up. So I'm going to mark that. Now we're going to go over to the engraver, over to the laser, put our logo down here at the bottom, and then fill that with epoxy, run it back through the planer. So I want to leave these on here for now. All right, let's go over to the engraver. Get that framed out and make sure it's where we want it to be. go now the laser engraving leaves just a little bit of uh, I don't know, smoke residue maybe on the on this so I'm just gonna hit that real quick with a little bit of sandpaper clean that up real good Okay, so that was kind of a wasted day. I took one too many passes. All the epoxy is gone. So we're just gonna finish it in our normal fashion. Uh, it's a good thing about this channel is, hey, you see the mess ups too. Uh, we thought we'd try something different and it didn't work. So what we have to do now, we're gonna get this cut to our actual lengths. Just gonna use the chop saw for that. And then uh, start the finishing process. Oil, put a nice chamfered edge on it, oil it up, wax it, and call it good. We're not going to completely go through the whole finishing process because on the front side, whoever we give this board to um, for our free giveaway on our Facebook page, they're going to have the option to have a monogram or a last name or something engraved on the front. So... Uh, that's what we did to get our name out there a little bit. We have a Facebook page. It's Rustic Timber Design. And if people liked and shared the video, or if people liked and shared the photo of a cutting board that we did, we were going to offer up a free cutting board to a random person. So let's get this one cut down and at least halfway finished. I decided to go ahead Cut this one on the table saw. I normally use the chop saw, but I don't use my table saw enough. So I already switched back out for my combination blade. Get that just up above there.
So one thing I do not like about this Craig catches it, it drops down. I'm gonna have to do this on the chop saw. What I really need to do is build myself a crosscut sled. Got that miter gauge from Craig. And if you get too wide, it falls off the edge of the table. So we're just going to do it with this nice and slow. If it's one common thing you should get out of this video, not everything goes according to plan. Sometimes, sometimes you plan on using some epoxy and the epoxy just has a different plan. Your project has something else in mind. So don't be afraid to try something new, some epoxy or using a laser engraver or something like that. Uh, but just be safe when you're doing it. And you know, if it doesn't come out, recover from it somehow. Either get rid of the whole project or luckily this one, I could just plane it down a little bit extra. It still has our normal logo on the back. So no harm, no foul. But it was, it was kind of fun trying, and you get to see it on video. So that's what this channel is all about, like I said before, is what can we do in this little shop to make something nice out of something uh, square or out of rough cut lumber or whatever. Let me get my coffee cup out of the way. We're about to do some sanding. Okay, so we're gonna do a whole bunch of different grits here. Get this all cleaned off. Starting at 80. We're gonna start at 80, work our way up eventually to 320. We'll do some steps in between there. What I like to use to sand on these moving blankets. Got this one from Harbor Freight. Sort of keeps it from moving around, but gives me a nice soft surface. See, that's really not going anywhere. Yeah, I need some power. Hey. While this guy's trying to find some power, why don't you go ahead and subscribe, like the video, the problem with maybe the hit the notification bell. Really helps us out. Maybe we can have one more than one extension cord. <laughs> Guess what? No power. Because the extension cord's sitting somewhere else. It's at the planer. Something like that. I don't have a lot of power options in my garage, so some of those tools, the ones that I basically use right here at the workbench, are off of a extension cord. Well, let me get this knocked down real quick. Now the 80 grit is really just to get rid of any of the tool marks that may have been left on there. Yeah, the 80 just gets rid of the tool marks. Now we'll start working our way. Pretty smooth now. I got it to, to 220. I haven't popped the grain with water yet. Pop the grain. I hate that. I kind of hate that saying. I haven't raised the grain with water yet. So first I want to get a chamfer detail on the edge. See how that's going to come out. I'm going to use my really cheap ass uh, router table to do that. So we'll go over the router table and see how that comes out and then start sanding again. 
put the water to it. All right, meet you over at the router table. Now this router table is just an extension of my table saw. I just built a plywood table to sit in here, buried a, a router plate that I had from another uh, little router table and I used the fence. So this is what we got, this is what we work with and I think it's going to be okay. All right, let's, uh, oh, I need some power. And I do have this one hooked up to, I took the quote unquote safety switch off of the little router table and mounted that here. So I have a quick way to turn that off if I need to. So let's uh, router out some chamfers. Oh, I need to turn the router on first. Good. I like it. And there we go, I'll get a little chamfer on the edge. I'm going to sand this up. Pop the grain up with some, see there I go again. There I go again. I'm going to raise the grain with some water. Water popping. I can see why people use it. It is kind of catchy. I'm going to pop. I'm going to pop the grain with some water. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's, let's get after that. I'm going to hit this with 120 again, just to knock down the edge where I just uh, routed that out. Shouldn't take too much. One eighty. Then before we hit it with the water, we'll just wipe it down with a clean towel. Gets a lot of that sawdust out of there. Use my little Craig prop you up, doodads. Because when you spray this down, if you accidentally get this a little bit too wet and you don't allow it to dry the same on both sides, so airflow underneath, uh, you could get some, some bowing or cupping uh, going on. So I just like to raise that up. This is a special mixture of H2 and O uh, to get that grain to raise up or pop. Yeah, it's growing on me. You don't want to soak it, you just want to give it a mist, wipe it down. Okay, I'm going to leave it just a little damp. Make sure we get the sides. The reason that that raises the grain is because as we machine this or milled it, through the different machines, it causes these little micro cuts in the grain. What that does is these, these grains will start, the ends of the grains will start standing up, kind of feels rough again. So it's really important on cutting boards because the first time that somebody wipes this down, they're gonna notice that that baby smooth finish is gone uh, if you don't do this so definitely definitely do it that's probably too much Gives you the first look of what your board is going to look like all finished too. First board we did, we left it laying on a towel thinking that was the right thing to do. Kind of left it overnight. Came back and it was turned into a soup bowl. Alright, there's that. I'll give that just a little bit of time to dry. And we'll be back to sand it to its final grit and get the oil on. If you've watched me mumble along this, this far, you might as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button because, uh, well, apparently you're a glutton for punishment. So you might as well get a good taste of it, you know, at least once a week. All right, we'll be back. So now that the water popping is done, I've got this, uh, 
I've got this rough feeling on the board now. Let me show you what that looks like. My, my good camera won't take a, a good video of it, but my iPhone will. So let's look at what those hairs look like. Okay, it's not the black spots, it's those like right there. Okay, that's what popping the grain does. It brings up those those little hairs. You can see it a little bit. That's what raising the grain actually means. It brings those to the surface, causes them to curl up. That rough feeling again. So now we're gonna sand those back off. I'm gonna start at 180, see if that does it. And here's the 220. Now I'm going to pop this grain one more time just because I want to make sure that this is good for the end user. This board is a prize in a giveaway. So we're giving this one away as a way to get our name out there a little bit. And have people following our our Facebook page allow them an opportunity to win something. So I want this one to be perfect. I want all of them to be perfect really. If we didn't do this step right here, first time they wipe this down with water, they would feel that raised up green. So now that we've sanded it from 80 to 120, water popped it, I'm sorry, 80 to 220, water popped it, it went from 120 to 320. Uh, this board is just as smooth as can be. So now it's time to put the finish on it and get this thing out to its rightful owner. Let me put my coffee away. First thing I'm gonna do is blow it off real good. My dogs might freak out, they hate the air hose. Oh, they didn't. There he is. He, he hates the air hose for some reason. I think as a puppy, I may have been playing and low pressure, you know, and maybe he has PTSD. I'm not sure. Let me go take care of that. Nothing's going on. You're okay. You're okay. I'm fine. I think he might think the air hose is trying to attack me. I'm not sure, but I assure him that I'm okay and he calms down, so. All right, let's get a finish on this. What I'm using for finish. For this one, I'm gonna use some uh, cutting board oil. It's uh, Howard cutting board oil. I get this from Lowe's. Uh, all it is is mineral oil. You could actually get this at you could probably actually just pick up some mineral oil at Walmart or Walgreens or, you know, whatever you have. Probably a little cheaper. This has vitamin E in it, so maybe that's good. I don't know. All I'm going to do for finish on this is a couple of coats of oil, and then I'm going to set it off to the side. The contest winner that wins this board from my Facebook group, um, they're going to be able to tell me what they want engraved on the front of it. So I don't want to put a whole lot of finish on there. I just want to treat it with some oil, let it get some nutrients back into it. When they tell me what they want on it, I'll engrave it and then complete the finishing process, which is going to be either the board butter that we make ourselves or which is made out of beeswax, or I'm going to put on some of this Howard, uh, wax. Either one's great food safe. I'm thinking about on my next one trying Rubio Monocoat. I heard that's food safe also, but 
Uh, I'm not sure. So I have a protective piece of plywood underneath here to protect my bench because my assembly table, because as you can see, it is spotless. Yeah. I'm going to put it up on my Craig Pops. Geez, that's nice. I'm just gonna pour some oil on it. You wanna get this on there really thick and <clears throat> let it soak in. Really for as long as you want to. I usually do the first coat for 15, 20 minutes, half hour, an hour, whatever. Nice and thick, especially on the top. I go really thick on the top and the bottom. Let that really soak in. Pulls it down through the grain really well. Get the edges. I've had some people say that if you put too much on, leave it on for too long, that it'll start getting like a sticky, gummy mess or whatever, but I don't find that to be the case. Between me and the sawmill, we've worked this enough so it's dry, it's thirsty, and these nutrients. really do a lot to protect the board <clears throat> not just from like bacteria and stuff but it helps keep it from cracking and splitting I always flip it over put just a little more on the front So I'm not going to bore you with the rest, I'm just going to put, like I said, one more coat of oil on it and then I'm going to set it off to the side until April 1st when we figure out who the winner of this board is. So thanks for watching till the end if you did. I know it's a kind of a boring video, but I really like making these cutting boards. It's kind of therapeutic and it's simple no matter if you have, you know, Lowe's kind of junky ass tools or you know, if you have high-end tools. I don't have a drum sander. I didn't need one. Just took me a little longer to hand sand it. So, you can make one of these. Find a hardwood dealer near you that'll sell you some hardwood lumber. Find them on Marketplace. That's where I found my guy. And get yourself... You at least need a joiner, I think. That, that's my opinion. You could do it on the table saw with some jigs and stuff, but I think you really, really need a planer. Uh, I'm sorry, you really need a joiner to be able to get all of the sides flat. So when you glue them up, there's no gaps. And then if you can use a planer, remember my little trick of leaving two of them a little long takes care of the snipe, especially if you have a cheap planer like I do. That Porter Cable planer is probably, I don't know, 15 years old, and God only knows what I've run through that. <clears throat> But that worked, that worked exceptionally well. Um, and then just play with your patterns. You know, maybe people are starting to like plain Jane, all one color. Um, I really like edge grain. I'm going to do an end grain soon. 
but I like these edge grain boards. They, they come out very nice. So once again, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, and we'll catch you on the next video. So thanks for watching.